what's good y'all your boy ross back at again with another video so we're gonna check out prestigious wwe titles that became worthless now this should be a very interesting one i'm sure we've seen over the years someone holding a championship and then all of a sudden it's not even all of a sudden you gradually see one person hold the title then another person hold the title relatively quickly the same title and it doesn't have the same prestige as it used to um it starts to lose its value with the people that are actually holding it how seriously they're taking holding the championship what type of matches and feuds are being fought for the title all these things matter but sometimes you know, it's low on the totem pole, especially in WWE in the past when it comes to, all right, who's holding this belt? For example, the Intercontinental Championship at one point was a waste of time. It was a paperweight championship. If you guys remember, there was a time where just because you were the Intercontinental Champion didn't matter because they weren't booking you in, in important feuds or anything or the person that's holding the championship didn't add anything to it. It happens. It happens. So we're going to check out some of the moments where, you know, uh, the championship lost its t uh, prestigiousness, prestigiousness and uh, its importance on how they were booked, whoever had the championship. 10 WWE titles that lost their worth and was treated like a prop. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our videos on WrestleMania XL. Number 10, the European title. Yep. The European title was introduced in WWE in 1997 and it was a way to build interest in the product in European markets as well as give WWE another mid-card title that could be defended across TV, live events and pay-per-views. For the first two years or so of the title's existence, the title was booked well with names such as Val Venus, X-Pac and D'Lo Brown being excellent champions and the reigns helped give credibility to the title. Mm -hmm. During these two years, the title acted as a great stepping stone for either the WWE title or the Intercontinental title and due to how deep the Attitude Era audience was, this was a smart move on WWE's part. Yep. As they pushed towards the end of the Attitude Era, the European title became a burden for WWE to book as it wasn't a single memorable reign between 2001 to 2002. When the title was retired in 2002, it was seen as a long time coming, and it was mm -hmm. about time the WWE put that title out of its misery. Number nine, the 24-7 title. Oh boy. The 24-7 title Brother. is always gonna have a tough task of getting over with the audience. From the moment the infamous title was introduced by Mick Foley, fans were already loathing the title, yet over time, they gradually came around to the concept. And that's because of our truth. Our truth, I don't care what nobody say. Our truth was the greatest for this iteration of the 24-7 championship because he he made it entertaining. Outside of our truth, really, for the most part, this shit was just a waste of time. I wouldn't say waste of time because it got wrestlers on TV, so I don't want to say that, but it wasn't meant to be taken seriously. And our truth is the most prestigious person to hold the championship. And they don't even take our truth seriously. His character is not meant to be taken seriously. So that should let you know but either way it was entertaining when our truth did hold the uh hold the championship primary reason as to why fans started to enjoy the title was thanks to the work of our truth and drake maverick just said it. both names put a ton of effort into making the title mean something and their antics were some of the standout moments of the title's run in the company yeah. unfortunately when truth or maverick weren't in possession of the yeah. title it completely fell apart the title was treated like an utter joke, and if a wrestler was seen chasing the title, it was a sign that WWE Creative had nothing for that specific wrestler, Look at that, and that they considered them a low-card talent. Yeah. Number 8. Tag Titles mm. At WWE, specifically Vince McMahon, had a love-hate relationship with the tag titles over the years. In the Attitude Era, the tag titles were presented incredibly well, and this was down to the Hardy Boys, mm -hmm. the Dudley Boys, and Edge and Christian as all six men reignited the tag division. Facts. While some iconic teams were presented in the Ruthless Aggression Era, the tag titles legitimately dwindled, and this was despite there now being two sets of tag titles for each respective brand. When WWE pushed forward into the PG Era, the presentation of the tag titles would receive a vast yet fair criticism. The tag division would be virtually non-existent mm -hmm. and most of the reigns would come from two names thrown together yep. and they would refuse <laughs> to create any substantial or long-term teams. Thankfully, due to legendary teams such as the New Day, the Bar and of course the Usos, the tag titles over the past few years have been presented somewhat well, as the aforementioned names are legitimate draws for the company, meaning that WWE has no choice but to present these teams and subsequent tag titles as if they mean something. Number seven. And they're doing great works with great wonders with it, especially now. 
Um, since we have two sets of uh, tag team titles for re the respective brands, I will say this though: um, could it be better? Yes, but I think we're in the right direction. We're definitely in the right direction. We know for a fact Vince didn't really care about the tag team division, and it's good that tag team. You know, they're trying to build it up as much as they possibly can now. Uh, it still can use a little bit of work, but. They're trying to add some care into it, and I'm I'm all for it. I mean, hell, last year we just saw the tag team titles be defended night one main event of WrestleMania. That's that's something to be proud of for sure. And women's tank titles. It was a positive step forward when the WWE introduced the women's tank titles in 2019. The titles would give the women something outside of the main title to compete for, and to the WWE's credit, they spent the first few months of building a healthy tank division. Uh -huh. Ultimately, it didn't take long for the women's title to be an afterthought, yep. and the treatment was scolded by fans as well as WWE talent with the likes of Naomi and Sasha Banks even walking out of the company over how WWE wanted to present them as tag team champions. Mm -hmm. Whilst the WWE has a number of active tag teams on the roster, the women's tag division isn't exactly exciting, and it's a rarity to see the tag titles defended on a premium live event. Due to the standing of the titles within the company, there have been calls from fans for WWE to ditch the titles and yeah. introduce a women's mid-con title, yes. which would be a great step forward. Number six. To be honest with you, even though I know they put Bianca and Jade in that position to really try to elevate those tag titles, I just they still don't, in my opinion, have enough women possibly for that to work without it being a whole bunch of rematches honestly i wouldn't have a problem if they did um just you know retire the women's tag titles bring in a women's mid car championship to the main roster if that's something that they choose to do but we will see what they do with them now that they got jade and um and bianca holding them so it could be better so hopefully it is let's see what they do with them but they're going in the right direction, but at, at one point, they they should have definitely threw them in the trash, bro. U.S. title. Since the WWE reintroduced the U.S. title in 2003, the lineage of the title has been up and down, with there being some outstanding reigns and some reigns that fans wish to forget. In 2015, John Cena won the gold and Cena embarked on one of the greatest U.S. title reigns of all time. Facts. Cena would debut the U.S. title open challenge and Cena had classic after classic each week. Additionally, due to Cena being the face of the entire company, the US title was given major spotlight across yeah. all areas of WWE programming. And some would say that in the summer of 2015, that the US title was the single most protected and illustrious title in WWE. When Cena eventually dropped the title, fans hoped that this positive trend of presenting mm -hmm. the US title like it mattered would continue. Yet, surprise, surprise, it the didn't. moment Cena dropped the title, the title fell off almost immediately. The title would slowly be relegated to the pre-show of pay-per-view so events, cold, and the bro. likes of Cena, Kevin Owens, and Seth Rollins would no longer be in the running for the title. It was instead lackluster names such as Alberto Del Rio, Ryback, and Kalisto. Number five, and that and that's the testament to someone having the title, bringing that that prestige up, and then you giving it to somebody else, or they're getting it, and creative doesn't keep that prestige going. And it kind of falls off. The fact that John Cena held it at one point, it was it damn near felt like the top championship because of how they booked Cena with the championship, how Cena presented the United States championship as if it was the most important title. And he's a top guy. And then it ends up being defended on the pre-show. I should let you know, man. Bruiserweight title. The Cruiserweight title was in such a good position on SmackDown in 2003. They had the likes of Rey Mysterio and Tajiri stealing the show with the aim of becoming a champion, and the formula for success for the Cruiserweight title was, was quite simple. Give talented wrestlers time to have great matches. Unfortunately, WWE never fully committed to making the title mean something outside of this brief time period during the Ruthless Aggression era. And whilst there were some memorable names to hold the title, including the two we just mentioned, as well as Gregory Helms when the title was retired in mm -hmm. 2007, it was in an abysmal place. 
and fans were ready for it to go away indefinitely. Yeah. It spoke volumes about what WWE thought of the title that Vince McMahon decided that the final champion should be Hornswoggle, which Wild. was a massive disservice to the lineage of the championship. Wild. Number four, Universal Title. Woo! WWE introduced the Universal Title in 2016 as Raw's new world title. The appearance of the title was instantly questioned, and for the first few months of the title's existence, the legitimacy of the title was a hot topic amongst fans. Mm -hmm. Thankfully, the inaugural champion Kevin Owens did a decent job in what was a difficult task in establishing a new world title. In 2017, the status of the title changed. Well, really, it was Finn Balor. Finn Balor ended up winning it, and then he had to relinquish it, but still. Changed as Goldberg won the title in a squash match. His reign would be brief as Brock Lesnar would win the title and embark on an extended part-time run with the title, which did little to market the title in a positive manner. No. Between 2017 to 2020, the title was seen as a joke by many fans, and it wasn't until Roman Reigns won the title in summer 2020 that the title began to be looked upon as a legitimate and worthwhile world title. Facts, Number bro. three. Facts. Even though Brock held it, I mean... He was barely there at the time, and you knew he wasn't going to lose it until uh, possibly to, um, to Roman Reigns. So it was pointless. It was a paperweight title, a title that you barely saw that you didn't want to see, the Raspberry Jam title. But when, when Roman Reigns won it, and he was a heel, and then he ran with it, that's when the prestige went up. Because for those first few years, he was there and he was a heel and he was putting on some great matches. It worked. It's crazy what a, a character change, a character change can do to a title. It worked. And it, it without a doubt, Roman Reigns is the greatest universal champion of all time. You arguably put him up there as one of the greatest WWE champions of all time. And they finally retired the Universal Championship. You guys haven't realized the championship that Cody holds now is the WWE Undisputed Championship. They've retired the Universal part of it perfect because there doesn't, there needs no extra lineage to that title. It ends with Roman Reigns being the longest champion of that title's life. Call it a day. But yeah, Roman Reigns definitely made the Universal Blueberry Jam <laughs> a championship that important he made it become the most important championship in the company the intercontinental title was about the intercontinental this title has been one of the titles that wwe has had a weird relationship with sometimes they would put considerable effort into making the title mean something and uh -huh. this is usually when a credible wrestler is given the strap the years of 2010 to 2015 were years in which the IC title was treated like a joke. Look at that. While some reigns were decent, the IC yeah. championship was traditionally booked to lose every single non-title match, and this in turn frustrated fans who just mm -hmm. wanted to see the title presented well on screen. In a celebrated move since taking the reins at WWE, Triple H has put new focus on the title. Gunther becoming the longest yes. reigning IC champion in company history. Yes. And it was a reign that restored every ounce of credibility back into the title yes. and ultimately made it just as valuable as the world title. This was down to strong, consistent booking and tremendous work from the ring general who didn't have a single bad match during his historic reign. Number two. We can't forget about what The Miz did with the Intercontinental Championship too. He definitely brought some prestige back to that. Guys, remember Miz and Dolph Ziggler feud? That was really great for the IC title. So we can't can't dis you know disregard. There has been some some good prestigious moments with the IC title, and then there's been some low moments where you're like, damn, they they just this was a wasted title reign. WWE title. And there were times throughout WWE's history where a WWE title reign did a massive disservice to the prestige of supposedly the most important title in the company's mm -hmm. history. Take for instance, in late 1999, uh, the WWE title was changed hands far too often, and names such as Vince McMahon and The Big Show were champions. Whilst Big Show would eventually become a legendary talent, his reign in 1999 was shockingly bad, as he was feuding with lower mid-card names such as Big Boss Man and Prince Albert. Fast forward to 2017, oh, and they made the controversial call to crown Jinder Mahal as the new champion. This received unfavorable reviews as Mahal was a jobber and he was suddenly now supposed to be taken seriously as WWE's top guy. I've been saying that. All I hear, all I hear is don't hinder gender. I said it and I'm standing on it. I said what I said and I meant it. 
Mahal's lengthy reign was filled with lackluster title defenses and was out of doubt hindered at the status of a once prized possession. And number one, the world title. The world title, aka Big say. Goldie, is considered by many to be the greatest looking wrestling belt of all time. The title looks incredibly prestigious, and when this title was reintroduced on WWE programming in 2002, they did somewhat a decent job in presenting the title as on par with the WWE title. Mm -hmm. This was helped thanks to top names such as Triple H and Shawn Michaels competing for the title, yet over time, the way the title was yes. drastically altered. They would deliberately present the title as inferior to the WWE title, mm -hmm. and when Raw and SmackDown merged in 2011, the world title was presented more of a mid-card title. Yes, it was. The title was placed in the opening matches of pay-per-view events, That's and in wild. 2013 at WrestleMania 29, the world title was contested between Alberto Del Rio and Jack Swagger, which fans hilariously compared to as WWE Superstars match. Towards the end of the life cycle of the title, the title did surge in relevance. Mm -hmm. This was thanks to the likes of Daniel Bryan, John Cena, and Randy Orton, yet the stain from the horrendous booking from the prior years simply just couldn't be forgotten. But they have it, folks. Yeah, man. There was a time where the World Heavyweight Championship, it, it, it seemed like an afterthought. It did. It seemed like a complete afterthought, a complete joke. There were some good reigns, some individuals that held it that made it seem more prestigious. You guys remember when uh, The Undertaker uh, was holding the championship and he was feuding with Batista when Batista had it. Like, in that era of SmackDown, that's where it felt like it was really important. But then there would be the situations of fucking Jack Swagger holding it. And Dolph Ziggler, we didn't even really get a good opportunity for that championship reign to really flourish because he ended up getting hurt. And then WWE said, nah, we're never pushing you again on that on that level, on that scale again. So they always, I wouldn't say always, but at one point, the World Heavyweight Championship was definitely considered a not even like second tier, mid tier title, even though it shouldn't have been. It should have been on par with the WWE Championship because at one point it was considered you know the better championship you know when triple h had it on monday night raw and stuff so comment down below let me know what are some wrestlers you feel like brought prestige to certain championships your favorite championships let me know what wrestler you feel like really elevated the title and the prestige of the championship but i appreciate all love support road to 150k and i'm still young speed the youtube wrestling champ of the world appreciate y'all kicking me see you on the next one peace